it's different because it's a closed skill. You're stood over a shot, for instance, that, and I've had players in this situation where you make or don't make this shot, it's the difference between, you know, 100,000 pounds or, or $100,000. So you talking about the technicality breaking down swings makes me think about what I've heard is, you know, a baseball coach would mess up Babe Ruth or, or a sprint coach would ruin Usain Bolt. Have you seen that happen with, with golf? So uh, golf without saying a, names, sorry, I wanted a disclaimer, like just. No, no, it's a, no, no uh, golfers are strange creatures in the, the, the quite often um, they make changes. And if they do make changes, they make them all at once. So they'll do a ton of things uh, all at once. And they have a really hard time quite often attributing to what's actually making any real difference, which sure? is very frustrating. I'm on, sounds like an easy way because, to figure it out. Because as soon as something goes wrong or if something's like not working for them, they'll change their swing coach. They'll change their short game coach. They'll change their, their long game cho- coach, um, you know, and they'll perhaps change their physio. They'll change, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. They'll maybe their change wives, their management. Their kids, they you move know. around. <laughs> yeah, and they and it's just moving deck chairs on the Titanic a lot of the time. And and yeah, um, yeah it's 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 interesting sometimes when that when that happens. And and uh, you know, I've had instances where players, for instance, one guy who worked with me for a long time, um, uh, has won events on on European tour. Um, I had a great relationship with him. He suffered uh, an injury issue um, unrelated to, to, to golf, I believe, was having a really rough time of it, but decided to change his coach, decided to stop working with me, decided to, to, to change everything. Um, and yeah, then obviously it did it, it not really working for him. So it's why would, and that's kind of confused me. It says, why would you take away the things that have gotten to where you are? And it's only get rid of them all. Um, and there's this, this, um, you know, this issue in golf of, of always trying to chase uh, perfection. And that problem leads to them sort of being neurotic and, and like, yeah, wanting to change stuff sort of fairly regularly. There's sort of, you quite often have guys change their coaches quite a lot. You look at the, you know, the Rory McIlroy's and the Tiger Woods of this, this uh, game, like even some of the top guys change their coaching staff quite, quite regularly. So it's, it's interesting. Um, there's a lot of turnover and because, obviously operates different to other sports in, the, in that um, you're paying your coaches to do this stuff for you. So because you are a customer, you feel that you can perhaps chop and change. It's not like working for a sports team where um, obviously your head coach is your head coach. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, you either get on with them or you don't. Whereas in golf, because you're paying for private services, apart unless you're working with us, uh, it's free. The, 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 the tour puts on the service. Uh, but if you're working with your coaches and you, you're paying them for, for, for their time, so, you know, some of them will take a percentage. Some of them will, 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 will want a front up fee. And then if the player is dissatisfied, they'll go elsewhere because they feel like a customer as opposed to, you know, having that sort of normal coach-athlete relationship, I guess. I was going to build on that and ask you on the psychological aspect of individual sports because you've trained fighters as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but you did develop the, the, the business side, which makes sense. I mean, you, you think even if your perception of the service you're getting is not great, you might change it. But how... How much do you um, reckon that individual sport feature influences all that, like the control factor, yeah. like the you know blaming on the exterior, maybe sometimes. Yeah, With yeah, it, it is, and well. yeah, something something I do encourage guys in individual sports to do is um, uh, because they tend to take on an awful lot on themselves. Is perhaps you know, and and those types of athletes quite often will have interesting personalities anyway because they've gravitated towards individual sports. They bear the cross of, of, of everything's on them to perform well. And sometimes they have a hard time looking inwardly and saying, where perhaps am I falling short? Instead, when things go bad, quite often it's a, it's, it's a lashing out. It's the looking at the external factors around them. What can I change? What can I move? move? You know, and, uh, uh, you know, again, it, it's perhaps the type of athlete, particularly in golf, is that quite often they'll, they'll, they'll get so bogged down in minutia that they'll look for different gadgets to use, supplements, different swing tools, whereas perhaps just getting stronger, sleeping well, being healthier might make all the difference. But again, it's, it's you know, rather than perhaps self-examination saying, hey, what could I be doing better? Instead, they look externally and it's like, what things around them can they change maybe, you know? It's desperation, isn't it? Like, mm-hmm. 
Now, what do you think in terms of how that relates to the, you know, the, that psychological aspect of the, the four coactives, you know, we had a Fergus on before, what are the, what is the best way to go about handling that arousal, especially in a sport like mixed martial mm. arts and golf that you've worked with? Yeah. So I guess, I guess the two, um, you know, somewhat golf, golf is a weird, weird sport. Um, unlike a fight, uh, where you've got, th you know, three, five minute rounds or five, five minute rounds or whatever, um, the pressure is there and then to perform well. And, you know, there are ood loops to close and, and lots of things like that going on in golf. It's different because it's a closed skill. You're stood over a shot, for instance, that, and I've had players in this situation where you make or don't make this shot. It's the difference between, you know, a hundred thousand pounds or a sure. hundred thousand dollars, you know, and that's like perhaps that's your important. last shot of the day. You've got to do, you've got to handle that, that situation. And I guess it's, it's that, that arousal factor is a lot of it is um, you talk to the players and it, a lot of it's largely idiosyncratic because some enjoy the challenge of being in a situation like that. Others have to tell themselves that it's just another shot. And, you know, that weight of a future, uh, you know, the weight of the potential of the future, the difference that might make is something that they, they don't bring to mind. So um, again, with this, because it's, you can hand out sort of trite psychological truisms, but again, I always think it's, it's rather idiosyncratic and the individual's response to stress, anxiety, um, and how they handle sort of states of arousal, it's kind of, it's kind of down on them um, and they're coached to figure that stuff out. I know that's not a particularly good answer, but um, I always find that psychology is sort of very nebulous and it's, you know, again, it's something that's highly idiosyncratic. You, and you mentioned something that, you know, me being outside of the golf game and I'm assuming our listeners also didn't understand was short game coaches, long game coaches, <laughs> is the putting coach part of the short game? Like that's, yeah. that's really interesting to me. Like elaborate on that. Yeah, you, Thank you. Yeah, you can have, um, you can have, uh, I've seen, I think I've, I've seen coaches for, for both short game. I've seen putting coaches. I've seen swing coaches, which I guess would be closer to a, to a long game coach. So and then you've got biomechanists as well, who quite often are a tertiary character that'll feed into all of those things. So if you're a golfer, you can really get bogged down in seeing lots of different people. And quite often I've seen situations where it's a, you know, too many, too many cooks spoil the broth, where guys have got four different people talking in their ear. A golfer, like for instance, I met with a fella today who's he changed his coach two years ago, but he's got one coach and that coach handles everything. I think he's happier for that than his previous situation where I think he had two or three coaches. I think he had a putting coach, a biomechanist and a, um, another coach as well that was like sort of a general coach. So, you know, again, it's up to the player because they're hiring these guys. They are the customer and um, it depends what the athlete wants. And quite often what you, you find is that golfers will shop for solutions. So they will change coaches an awful lot. You know, MMA fighters don't do that. Generally, they'll stay at the same gym until they die. So, uh, yeah, maybe change gyms once in their lives. But with golfers, again, it's shopping around for, for solutions. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Why don't you celebrate by watching more videos just like it? You can also help us on our quest to placate the algorithm gods by liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you.